Okay, welcome back to part three of this scene. I've laid down the tones and the composition, of course. Composition was in video one. And the tones that were accomplished in video two and the finishing touches will be in this third video, part three. Okay. Now I, after that camera shut down, I added some additional tones around on the sides here, maybe made some areas in here a little bit darker. And it's kind of given me uh, time to think about how I want to finish this scene off. Um, I'm going to go in here and lay down some additional tones. I was thinking about maybe even adding some additional gray tones via the alcohol-based marker just to kind of get in some very hard-to-reach areas and just kind of round out some of these uh, rocks a little bit more. And there's just some areas that the uh, stylus tool just cannot get into where you need something a little bit more specific like a pen. Okay, areas around these trees. Okay, and that being said, uh, I mentioned in the first video that I intend to go in here and give this scene an overall cool scheme, uh, color scheme, value scheme, I guess color scheme, with the use of a tint, and used to be that in black and white photography you can kind of, you ever seen a little bit of a tint or colorize something with the use of some very pale tints, and this is kind of in the spirit of that. It's going in with the shadow stamping ink, you know, that being the Adirondack Lights Aqua here. You can use cloudy blue, that'll give it a different kind of a scheme. This blue here is kind of a, it's a bright, very light blue, and I like the way it looks as a tint on my scenes. I probably use the aqua and the peach bellini most for this uh, kind of color tinting idea. It just, I feel like gives the, you know, kind of a neutral gray. Um, it introduces temperature in a very subtle way. And I'm applying this rather liberally. Okay, get a good amount of it. It's kind of giving a... kind of looks really quite um, mellow. I don't know, to me, the spirit of the scene kind of changed in some way. It, it feels more quiet to me. I guess because I've knocked down a lot of the contrast too, so the less contrast, kind of the more mellow a scene can look. Yeah, it's really quite subtle. I don't know, I kind of look in the back of my screen here. I'm not showing, I don't know if this can read very much, but... Um, in person here, it's just a overall bluish tinge to it. Cool temperature. Okay. Now, as always, um, speaking of texture. I'm going to go in to the scene. 
There's a little cotton swab. And going in and adding these very subtle touches. I notice people are starting to use this more and more, and I'm really glad because I think it can really introduce um, uh, texture. I mean, we're kind of adding this light touch, and uh, you know, this texture can't be underestimated in terms of, uh, you know, the surface quality of a, any piece. It doesn't have to be a scene, but just uh, anything stamped, I, I would say. Because there's not a lot of opportunity for texture. Uh, that comes around because, you know, we're creating these crisp impressions, which is what we want, you know, and when we're doing embossing, we don't want it to look all blobby, we want it to look crisp, right? Well, you know, that's just about the case in just about every aspect of stamping, but, you know, going into the impressions and kind of softening some, uh, that a little bit of softness can really kind of just, it can make the crisp areas even more so by the contrast against something a little bit more diffused. Um, I'm adding some of this little texture on the water's edge and again, start in your lighter areas and work out, you know, kind of diffuse that out a little bit. I'm adding a little bit more light in my light areas, and then as that moves into the darker areas, I use kind of a lighter touch and less of an application of it. Okay, meaning a softer tap or just less ink. Um, you can kind of go in there and uh, dab it off with your finger, you know, to take some of it off. rocks in the water. So these crisp spiny branches down here. So we have some soft, crisp, spiny branches. Some of these rocks, these pebbles down here. Why don't we vary them a little bit with the use of uh, some softer looks of them, contrasting against some very sharp, darker ones. Periodically, take a look at what you're doing, you know, from afar, and get a good idea of the overall and how these um, specific marks are influencing the overall scene. Introduce a little bit of fogginess and mist around the base of this um, beaver dam. I mentioned in uh, the first part of this video or lesson that one of my favorite movies is uh, this documentary on beavers, but the uh, the title of that movie is uh, just beavers, and they call it the subtitle is the best damn movie uh, ever, or the best damn movie, D-A-M, which is kind of fun. Okay. Now I 
might go in and add more of that later, but um, let's go in and add some really specific marks now. Um, with the gel pen highlights. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take this opportunity here to give a little bit of a, uh, a little bit more in-depth lesson on the usage of this. Okay, this rock right here is capturing the light, right, coming from over here. So what you want to do is I'm going to see how I'm kind of on the light edge of this, I'm adding those dots to begin with, but as it kind of moves off into the shadow, I'm spreading those dots out a little bit more. And it's the same thing for here. Closer to the light, more condensed dots, and farther away, less. Okay, this edge of the rock, more dots, and spaced apart, and less dots, okay? More, or even filling in, because it's fairly light. And then as I move away, I will spread my dots out a little bit more, okay? So that way we get this varied uh, application of these highlights here. And that's the way I approach the use of light, you know, when it comes to this pen right here, okay? Now in this area out here that gets really, oh, I'm sorry, really quite dark over here, um, maybe just a few little dots, okay? Let's take a look at what that looks like up close. Um, okay. Oh, come on, camera, focus. Okay. So see that right in there? More dots, less dots over there. So see, they're more condensed in here. Oh, well, it's kind of blurry right there. Okay, let me zoom out. Every time I zoom in, I always kind of get in trouble because everything I'm doing is off screen. And I forget that I'm zoomed in. Okay. Uh, little bits capturing that light over there. And, okay. How about some dots in the water, okay? A few more dots. And see what I do? I'm just kind of clustering them. Like that. You don't want to do it too... You don't want the spacing to be too even. Otherwise, it, it's kind of more... Uh, and it looks okay, but uh, sometimes it can look... And I used to do this all the time. My spacing was too even. Okay. Um, and it looked more like Christmas lights, you know, with an even distribution of uh, dots everywhere. Okay, so see that? More dots in the light, and as it moves out, there's less. So put more space in between the, your, uh, your dots, your highlights. Okay. And as it always turns out, time flies when you're having fun, and I'm already at... 13 minutes here, so I'm trying to get as many of these done as I can. I'm putting the highlights on the top surface of some of these branches, logs. Give it some texture. Highlighting some uh, reflected light in water is called specular light. And it's light that's brighter than white. Now, in our case, we're just kind of representing that. But without it, you know, it, it loses kind of a, the opportunity for a lot of sparkle. Okay. You see that water down there? So you take away those dots and, you know, it's really, uh, I feel it's kind of missing that opportunity, like I said, so.
kind of fun to go in there. You don't have to put as many as I do, but just a few can, can go quite a long way, and I would kind of recommend that. Okay, I'm going to add it throughout this cylinder, and I'll add the finish piece on uh, my Flickr account and maybe in the, in the gallery section online, so... Uh, or maybe I'll put it, I'll post it underneath the video because um, there's no way I'm going to go and torture you through a, you know, with a part four.